I love that. I love it. Awesome. That's exactly, I mean. It's an, like, how is it fair, right? Like, I'm yeah. one person doing the job of many, but there's so much on the line if I mess up. They have every resource they could dream of and then some. But if they mess up, it's like, meh. And it, it's happening at a at an institutional level right now, at a systemic level, where the AT and T now is is wanting to shut off all of the copper lines, and uh, yes. and 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 so what happens with that is that all of the records and and all of the history, you know, will will just go away, and they'll just be like, yeah, bye bye, see you later, and uh, you know, it's all part of a kind of a, a master plan, a master you know conspiracy. If you will, and I hate using that word, but I mean it. It really is. It's just they have all of the the players that are in place at the regulatory agency, from the governor's office, who appointed his right hand lady to be the the uh, president of the California Public Utilities Commission. After some scandal had hit, that one of the uh, former executive directors within that regulatory agency here in California had found that somewhere between two and three hundred million dollars had went account unaccounted for that were collected uh, by the phone companies for specifically for fiber upgrades, among other things, but that was one of the big things. And the regulatory uh, agency who was responsible for saying, you know, did they collect that money? Did they spend that money appropriately? All the things that you're saying, I mean, why is the accountability to the, to the small person so like, you know, to the Nats eyelash and for these big guys, it's like, oh, you know, Oh well, I mean they they actually didn't didn't get there. So to your point, the accountability, the explanation, like reconcile this, majority leader or or Mr. Governor, you know, reconcile this for us. Why are they not being held to that same standard, particularly when you know California is going to receive 1.83 billion dollars from B for the for this very issue? We need to make sure that their books are right before this new money hits. Why would you not want to do that? What's the good rationale for not wanting to have that kind of accountability there, right? Right. This is all happening so fast. These things that need to be in place for all of these funds that are coming down the pike at breakneck speeds, our, our systems need to be ready to do something productive with those funds, right? And if we have issues like the one you've just described, I, I don't see how anyone in leadership could then turn to their constituents and say, like, yes, I am stewarded, stewarding these federal funds well, have no doubt, when historical precedence has proven otherwise. And, you know, the old adage, we are doomed to repeat history if we don't learn from it. So, you know, my question is this, state leaders, federal leaders, what are we doing here? What are we doing here? All this amount of not money? is for nothing if we don't do this right. Well, Larry, I have to thank you because, you know, I spew this stuff all the time and most people are like, oh, there she goes again on her soapbox. So it is so thank you for giving me the time and the space. And I've just learned so much, uh, you know, about the similar challenges that your community is facing. I feel like the answer is in there somewhere, right? Mm -hmm. If all of the us's, all of the disenfranchised communities could come together and learn from each other, there's got to be a way out of this. Please like the video and subscribe to our channel today.